Monsieur Rodney, you are trying to be a scoffier. The mushrooms, I'm doing a mushroom job. Oh, she's. Oh! I'm having fun. Can't wait to get some friends in. I need some friends. Oh dear. Hello. 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 Welcome to my wonderful YouTube channel. Today, I've got a wonderful chicken. It is a corn-fed chicken from France. I went to the butchers and I said, hello, mate, what's lovely? And he said, this bit of chicken corn-fed, yes. One thing we're gonna do is make a pie, and there's a few wonderful lessons in there. You can kind of make a pie with stuff that you have in the house. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's just wonderful things you've got in your dry store. So, first thing first, it's just a task of stuffing the old jacksy of the chicken with flavor. Bit of garlic, stuff it in there, then lemon. Now, what's gonna happen when you stick a lemon up the old internal cavity of the old chicken, what is lemon? She is moist. And what's gonna happen with that lemon when it cooks? It's gonna steam internally based said chicken. Steamy, steamy, steamy. Get yourself a nice bit of oil. Mm -hmm. Lube the old girl up. You know, just think of her as like your, your missus on holiday when she's like, oh, Steve, can you give me a little Sandra Pay? And you're like, oh yeah. Let's get in there. So what you don't want to do is miss any of those little nooks and crannies because what's going to happen? The mist is going to burn. She's going to get pissed off. Happy wife, happy life. That's what I say. Rub it on, rub it on, rub it on. If you've got a clean hand, open up the oven, but I'm going to use my foot. Slide the old girl in. 180, one hour. See you in a bit. I'm back. I know what you're thinking. Oh, we didn't wash the knife. Ooh, ah. I did. So, let's make a pastry. Super simple. You can do it by hand if you really want to, but I don't really want to. So, what you need, super simple, 400 Gs of flour, and it's 250 grams of butter. Oh shit, that's quite a lot. What you can do with the cold butter is you can kind of like crumb it through, crumb it, crumb it, crumb it, so it stays nice and short. But to be honest, you can do it in this in a fraction of the time, less mess, bit more washing up, but who cares? Right, you go there. Try not to get it down the, oh for God's sake. I've just realized I've used the last of the butter, but, but, like some really weird, cool chef, I actually just did a video on making butter. Oh, go check out my TikTok. Let's just do two of those. So nice and cold. Uh, okay, a pinch of salt in there. Then all you need to do is just gently pulse. This is just some cold water, and then just add a little bit until it just starts to form. Touch more. When it starts to clump, just the tiniest amount, like that, perfect. So all I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna bring it together like that. That's it. Pick up the bits. Just so you've got a lump like that. Perfect. Wrap it in some cling film. <sighs> Give it a little once over and then pop this in the fridge just so that butter can harden up again, make it easier for you to work with. Um, and then we'll get back to it. All right, bye. Okay, so now all you need to think about is a tasty base. Think of it in four elements. You're gonna have your chicken, which is gonna be your protein, which is gonna be some beautiful roasted flavor. You're gonna have vegetables, haha. -ha. You're gonna have pastry, and then you're gonna have to have some form of sauce. For the, um, what's it called? Uh, for the vegetables, I've got a, a spongy bit of celeriac here. Celeriac is wonderful. You can build it out however you want, but I'm just gonna saute all of these little nuggets off, or you could even roast it if you've got the oven on. What I always talk about is getting flavor into every single element that you're cooking. Don't just boil things, because I think you know, boiling serves a purpose, but also you can build wonderful flavors in your veggies by just giving them a little roast, a little saute, fry these little things in a load of butter, garlic, some herbs if you've got, we've got some parsley, but if you've got some thyme or anything like that, build those levels of flavor. Leek, let's chuck that in bit in, no one will know, it's a pie. Onion. Right, so all of these veggies, I'm just gonna go into a pan at the back. Load of olive oil. And then I'm just gonna slice these mushrooms in half. Keep them quite chunky, but I'm just gonna give them a little bit of extra attention, just so you, you cook them down. So I'm just gonna saute these off. I don't care if they get a little bit wet, because we can use that for the sauce. So again, good glug of oil. One of the lessons in this video is we're just gonna, shit, I think I broke the wheel. We're gonna look at mother sauces. So a mother sauce is basically taking something that can be turned into something else, can be turned into something else. So the main one that you would probably really recognize is, is a bechamel. So a bechamel, you make a roux, which is basically flour and butter, and then you add milk, and then that turns into a bechamel. Yes, you can infuse the milk, yada, yada, yada. Frenchies don't come at me. Bechamel, then what you'd do, say for example, you're making a cauliflower cheese, this would then turn into a Mornay. So it's basically a cheesy bechamel, okay? Super simple. Now, the thing that I find really interesting is almost like a, a step on from 
a mother sauce, sort of deconstructing a mother sauce. For the pie, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a thing called a velouté. Velouté. Okay, so a velouté is basically a bechamel, but done with stock. So you make a, um, a roux, we're gonna do this neatly now because I wanna explain. So you do butter, he says, and flour, it says neat. I can't write for an absolute, oh, that's like, my son can write better than that. And then what happens is you have your stock. So again, the Frenchies will go wild and there are sort of like darker sauces that you can do. But if you think of your stock, you could use a veg stock, you could use a chicken stock, you could use a beef stock, which then digresses into another sauce, but we won't go there. Now, this is the point where you get to be playful. And this is what I think is really exciting about food is whenever I make a bechamel, I like to do my roux, which is this part here, but then put garlic through it, right? So you do your butter and flour, and then you put some sliced garlic in there, and you cook that out. It goes quite dark, and you get this beautiful caramelized um, garlic flavor. Fantastic, a new flavor that we have invented and we've introduced. You could take this butter, here and turn that into a burn noisette, a burn butter. So you've got a beautiful nutty butter. Your, your sauce is developing already, so you've got nutty butter. I hope you're with me on this because it's how you unlock other flavors. Nutty butter, you're adding garlic into the mix, and then you've got your flour. So already you've like redeveloped a velouté base, and then your stock, any flavor stock can go in. So you've built an unbelievable depth of flavor here, and then you've just amplified it with this and turned it into a wonderful sauce. Frenchies are gonna be absolutely, Monsieur Rodney, you are trying to be a scoffier. I'm not, mate, I'm not, shit. So talking about the mushrooms, if you overfill a pan of mushrooms like I did, fantastic, what an idiot, what will happen is you haven't got enough um, heat or area, they'll just steam, they won't fry. And in a weird way, I wanted them to steam a little bit because I want a bit of this, this mushroom lube to come out, which I'll add to the stock, which will give me a sort of like another depth of flavor. I'm gonna dribble that into a stock here. So this is just a stock cube. Not gonna mention any names because uh, they're not paying enough money. Uh, so in you go, you little girl. You can start frying this a little bit harder and get a little bit more color on them. All of these veggies here, cooking down nicely. I don't want them softened so they turn to a mush. I just want to sort of caramelize them a little bit. So a little bit of butter will go in there at some point. Okay, so there's our stock. Let's make a velouté. Oh, you're so cool. You make your own butter. So a bechamel or a roux is basically 50-50 butter to flour. Super simple. Where did that flour go? Did I put it back? God, it's always fucking right in front of me. My phone, cool. No messages, good chat. Okay, so melt the old butter. We want to, we're gonna burn this a little bit, and burning it is basically, there's like fat, and then when you make butter, the milk solids, not all of them would have come out. So what will start to happen is it will start to froth, and then this froth is basically the, the uh, all of this steam, sorry, is water coming out, but the milk solids will start to burn, and then that'll give you this wonderful nutty flavor. Just gonna peel two or three cloves of garlic, slice it up. This one's gonna go in the back with the old celeriac. Go and go, in you go. And then we're gonna do some more for the old bechamel. Look at that, see? Nice little bit of color. Turn the heat right down, flour goes in, and then just give that a little mix. This is where you wanna control the heat, because you don't want things to burn. I'm just gonna take mine off. Use the residual heat of the pan to carry on cooking things. Then you can put it back on. So, slice up some garlic. You can go thin, you can go thick. It kind of semi-dissolves in a weird way. So just get it in while you're cooking that flour off. Should have been pre-prepared and done this. Why are you so big? Induction hobs, mate. You're so needy. And then, just cook this out. You'll smell this instant sort of like caramelization of, uh, well not anymore, because it's off, um, of the garlic, and it'll just sort of start to sizzle a little bit. So these veggies back here, as I said, no color, but they're just softening down, caramelizing, lovely. And the mushrooms, looking absolutely revolting. I'm just gonna put those into this pan here and we can build those flavors. So it depends how far you want to take this. This, this. The garlic can be kept quite raw, or you can actually cook it out a little bit more. I actually quite like it a little bit <laughs> punchy. Just add a little je ne sais. You know what? Right, so your little stock. Um, don't panic at this stage, all right? Because what will happen is it will go really thick and you'll be like, oh no, oh no, my sauce. It's turned into a massive gelatinous, gelatinous blob. Don't worry about it. 
You could probably just lob the whole thing in and just waz it with a stick blender and get rid of all of those lumps. You'll be all right. So this is something I did. I had loads of mushrooms from doing a mushroom job. They left them with me. I put them in the dehydrator and dried them out and then just blitzed them down. George Egg said it, it smelled like Horlicks, but you've got this deep, rich, what's the word? Like umami bomb. Like an, oh my God. It smells like um, the most amazing mushroom risotto you'll ever have. Right, that's done. Check on the veggies. So this is fine. So this stage, season it, but be aware and think about other flavors of things that are going on. Get the old butter in there. And then your chicken's obviously gonna have a wonderful taste as well. So we're in a good place, building layers of flavor. So I've got some parsley here. Again, if you don't have any herbs, don't worry about it. Right, I'm gonna stuff this into a gigantic bowl. I think I made enough pie filling to sink a battleship, but it's all right. It will freeze. Here's your velouté. My nan used to make a pie and uh, God bless her soul, she's no longer with us, but she made a pie and no one could recreate it. Chicken and ham pie, no one could recreate it. Um, so now we're left without a recipe. Cheers, Nan. Okay, so here's the old chicken. We've let it cool down for a little while and it's now gonna be safe to shred, all right? If you've got all of this juice, get it in there. Easiest thing to do is stick your fingers in the, the legs and then just sort of give it a little pop and then that'll take the leg off. Come around here, have a little feel, give it a little pop, wiggle it off, lovely jubbly. Then you can take the, the skin off. I'm gonna keep the skin and I'm gonna stick that through as well because it's delicious and it's been roasted and it's lovely and salty. Wing comes off naturally. Your innards, they've kind of done their job. You could squeeze them out if you want to, but they might be a bit weird. So now, very simple, you can kind of just put your hand here and just like give it a little, little pull. Pull it apart a little bit, let them go in. Probably fast forward this bit because it's quite boring, isn't it? So the skin is full of flavor, so just scrunch it all up. It's gonna be super salty because you salted the outside quite well. Oh, it's great. Now what you need to do, just give this a good mix. Have a taste. Oh, it's so good. So with all the bones, remember, just get yourself a pot. Anything that you've collected, scraps of onions and all that kind of stuff, just make a quick stock. It's not gonna be as, um, Flavorful is like roasted bones because they've already been roasted, but it will make a wonderful broth. Mm, if we stop eating all the meat. Right, I'm gonna put this in the pan, make a stock, and be back. Okay. I know what you're probably all thinking. I only need a pie dish. I, I, yeah, I should have got a pie dish, but I haven't got one, but I got two of these really fancy ceramic things. So let's go, a little bit of flour on the, get rid of that. I'm gonna make it about yay thick. What's that? Half an inch. Roll out one way. Always make sure it's dusted. Turn it 90, roll out. Roll out one way, turn it 90. So you don't wanna do it too thin, otherwise if it goes too thin, then it's just not gonna bake evenly, but also then the liquid is just gonna probably like lube out and uh, create something bad. Right, so if you've got loads of flour, obviously just brush it off. You can be quite fruitile. Fruitile? Have a laugh with it. Um, so get one of your things, check the size. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? What I'm gonna do at this stage is, as I said, I'm gonna use this. This is gonna go in. Now, you don't wanna just push into the middle because that will obviously poke a hole into, your, into the middle. So what you do is you kind of lift up a side, lift up, go around slowly. There's no, no race here. And just let it fall in. Fall, fall, fall. And then once it's all kind of like roughly aligned, you're in. Make sure you get a nice amount of your filling. Blob it in for the top. Remember, you don't need it as big. Gentle spin, gentle spin. I'm gonna put a bit of lube around the edge. One hander. Shoo! Right, so what I'm thinking, I'm just gonna stick my fingers in there, because I'm gonna use it all. Around you go. Okay, now this, I'm just gonna sit in the middle. Then I'm gonna push it down a little bit. Shell, get off, mate. And then just kind of like press it up against that lubiness. Lube, 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 lube. Now, with the fork, I'm just gonna press and crimp. Okay, now this stage, you're gonna lose a little bit of that pastry, but it's okay, no one cares. Apart from the people that'll be like, oh, you're Mr. Sustainable, that's food waste. Look, you can make pastry penises if you really want to. Right, there you go. I'm gonna give it a couple of little pricks, and then I haven't got a pastry brush, so I'm just gonna stick my fingers in and give it a little rub. There you go, there's your pie done in the most unconventionally weird way. But let's pop it in the oven. I'll say 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll have a look. 
Oh, yes. Get yourself some Parmigiano Reggiano or some kind of cheese. Oh, proper just grated my finger. So I'm just gonna press it down gently. There you go. Let's put them on a baking tray, see what happens. Whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've just managed to do all the washing up and I'm absolutely caked in excitement. Here's our little turkey Twizzlers. Look, it's not hard, is it? That's what she said. <laughs> oh, they need a dip. Now look, all you'll see with this is the top of the pie is cooked, but all this pastry around the side isn't. But what you've done is you've built up um, a, a form of rigidity. rigidity, so it'll actually hold its shape now and the, the filling won't burst out the side. So what we need to do now is just bake it, just so all of that round the side uh, cooks. So I'm just going to pop them on here, take these off. I reckon if that was thinner, like an actual pie tin, the side would have cooked, but it didn't, so it doesn't matter. Let's pop this back in. Just cook it for a bit. See you in 10. 10 minutes? Yeah. There's some wonderful noises coming from in and around the building. <laughs> right, so I'll give it a couple more minutes. Just gonna pull her out. Be brave, isn't it? Oh no, I punctured the bottom. Right, look at that. That is an absolute beauty of a pie. Mm. Oh, she's... Oh! So what would you normally serve with this? Nice little bit of their pie mash and liquor. Nice flaky pastry. Oh. I thought the pastry would be soggy. I mean, it's actually, I've done a good job. I'm quite proud of myself. It looks so hot that I'm actually dribbling. Oh, there is a thing that men do that when things are painful, they pinch their old Amazing. It's so, everything's just like so soft. I'm well happy with myself. Still super juicy. Maybe it needs a bit of gravy with it, but you can all make a gravy. That's a tasty pie. Look, if you want me to say, if you want me to balls up any more dishes, but have a laugh and explain a few principles along the way, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and all that jazz, but I'm having fun. I can't wait to get some friends in. I need some friends. Mm. No, yeah. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Mm. Filthy little thing, aren't you? Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hey guys. Um, it's doing a big old clean down. I'm right, I'm, I'm, I made a right miss. Um, but I just thought I'd take this time to just say, uh, look, thank you for all the love and support. Uh, for the new people here, thank you for coming along. For the people that follow me on TikTok, thank you so much for staying. Um, you know, as they all say, the old like, subscribe, a little follow, a little comment does go a long way. So um, please do what you can do. Uh, I'm having a wonderful time. Um, so yeah, any help would be muchly appreciated. Thanks for all your love and support. I love you all. Um, yeah, and comment, let me know. If these videos are shit, tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm just having a bit of fun. I'm not much of a techny person, so uh, all the camera angles and all that kind of jazz, I just, I, I just don't want to do it too much, but if it can improve your experience, let me know. Right, love you, bye.